Winter in the 1940s was not a gentle season. When coal deliveries stopped mid-month, when oil was rationed to the ounce, and when snowstorms buried roads, civilians couldn't wait for government relief or miracle solutions. They improvised, often reviving heating techniques that predated electricity and modern pumps. One method, nearly lost to time, allowed ordinary households to heat multiple rooms quietly, efficiently, and almost without fuel. This wasn't a clever hack. It was survival. Today, very few people have heard of the gravity-fed radiator loop, but understanding it can provide modern homes with a blackout-proof heating system that works entirely off physics. Before we dive deeper, if you're passionate about historical survival methods, hit the like button, share this video with fellow enthusiasts, leave your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Warfront Survival. Your support helps us keep these invaluable techniques alive. The principle behind the gravity-fed loop is elegant in its simplicity. Hot water rises, cold water sinks. Modern engineers call it thermosiphon circulation. For 1940s civilians, it was simply letting the system run itself. Instead of relying on an electric pump to force water through radiators, they arranged piping so that heated water naturally climbed to the highest point in the loop, gave off heat in the radiators, and then returned down to the heat source. As long as there was a temperature difference, circulation continued without mechanical assistance. This principle made the system invaluable during wartime blackouts and fuel shortages. No pumps meant no dependency on electricity. If a storm knocked out power or bombing raids darkened cities, homes could remain warm with a minimal fuel supply. A tiny fire under a well-designed boiler or stove produced steady, reliable heat, often enough to prevent pipes from freezing and keep living spaces comfortable. Installing a gravity-fed loop required foresight and, well, a good understanding of household layouts. The boiler or stove had to be positioned lower than the radiators it served. In multi-storey homes, this often meant placing the heat source in a basement, or sometimes even digging a shallow pit in single-storey cottages to create the necessary height for the loop. The greater the height difference between the water source and the radiators, the stronger the natural circulation. Piping had to rise continuously without dips or sags to avoid air pockets, which could, you know, halt circulation. The return line was placed at the bottom of the radiator and sloped downward back into the stove. Wartime manuals describe using any available materials, copper piping salvaged from old buildings, cast iron radiators from demolished homes, or even leftover plumbing from older heating setups. Insulation was essential. Uninsulated lines lost heat too quickly, reducing circulation efficiency. The heat produced by a gravity-fed system is gentle and steady, rather than, say, a rapid blast. Civilians learned to optimize this by insulating water lines, selecting larger or thicker radiators, and focusing on high-priority rooms like bedrooms and workspaces. Radiators were often placed beneath windows. This placement counteracted drafts and encouraged rising warm air to mix with incoming cold air, maintaining consistent warmth. Curtains around beds trapped heat in sleeping areas, making a single radiator serve as a microclimate within the room. Fuel shortages forced strategic heating. Rather than attempting to warm an entire house, families created what they called hot zones, with a single heated loop serving two or three rooms. 
fuel consumption dropped dramatically, yet living conditions remained tolerable. This wasn't just ingenuity, it was necessity, and it worked. Even in today's homes, the gravity-fed radiator loop remains highly relevant. A modern off-grid cabin, a retreat with solar panels, or a household preparing for extended outages can all benefit from a properly configured thermosiphon loop. The principles really remain unchanged. The heat source must be lower than the radiators, piping must slope steadily upward and downward, and of course, lines must be insulated. Many wartime systems included a small header tank in the attic to vent air and maintain pressure. A practical example is simple. A two-room cabin with no electricity after a storm. A small wood stove heats water in a jacket. A pipe rises to a radiator on the loft level. A second pipe returns the cooled water to the stove. The loop begins moving naturally, silent and efficient. Using just a fraction of the fuel a modern forced air system would consume. Even modern emergency scenarios, you know, show this method's resilience, keeping living spaces warm when electrical systems fail or fuel supplies dwindle. The gravity-fed radiator loop is more than historical curiosity. It's a proven survival tool that civilians relied on when conditions were far harsher than most of us experience today. Understanding it provides not only historical insight, but practical strategies for energy independence and emergency preparedness. Homeowners, historians and survival enthusiasts alike can study these techniques and implement them safely in modern settings. It's an intersection of history, physics and real-world problem-solving that has stood the test of time. If you've learned something new and want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to Warfront Survival, like this video, share it with fellow history buffs, and comment with your thoughts or experiences. Keeping these practical wartime methods alive isn't just academic. It's preparing for realities that history has already taught us.